Changing minds one thought at a time. Greetings, 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 everyone, and welcome to Motivate Social Podcast, where we are bringing you people who are changing the world via social media. But before we get started, you know, of course, my name is Dr. Ikeena Finch, and I cannot do the thing without my lovely, lovely co-host. Vanessa, how are thou today? I am great. How are you? Fabulous. You know, all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us who we're talking to today. Oh, I am so excited um, to have this guest on today um, because we have something that's going to take place in a few short weeks and we don't hear from our men often. This is the time where we need to hear from our men, especially what's going on today's world. And so today we have Genovia. Please forgive me if I butcher his name, Smith. He is going to be one of the speakers for the Breaking Barriers Unapologetically Conference, which will be virtually this year due to that due to the pandemic. Um, his topic, which is so catching for what we are dealing with today, and we have to have him on to hear what this man is going to speak about. I am excited to hear him talk about the mental state of mind. Mr. Smith, are you there? I am here. I am here. How are you ladies doing today? Pronounce your name. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> because it, 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 you're not the first and you won't be the last. <laughs> but um, it's pronounced Juvernia. Juvernia. Okay, yes. Juvernia. Okay. Well, I am super duper excited that you say yes to being a speaker for the Breaking Barriers Unapologetically Conference. And I want to know, and I know the audience cannot wait to hear, what, when you think of a mental state of mind, what, what, what's that like, especially what we're dealing with right now and the reason why they need to be at this conference to hear more about what you're going to be talking about? Well, the, the mental state of mind is just the place where you are. A lot of us are going through things and we have this tendency to not want other people to see what you're going through. So you, you, you try to compartmentalize or, or push it down or push it away when in actuality it really needs to come out. It really needs to be discussed and action needs to be taken on that before it drives you out of a proper mental state of mind. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Wonderful, wonderful. So when you are thinking about a mental state of mind, who do you, what type of person comes to your uh, mind first? Uh, who is your target audience, I guess? Well, initially, uh, my target audience was unemployed men um and it doesn't matter what race or nationality just the fact that you're unemployed because regardless of who you are what color you are as a man you are supposed to be a provider but if you have no employment you have no income how do you provide where does your provision come from um and one of the things that I, um that i've learned when i was unemployed myself was that if you're married and have a family, you may be unemployed, but you're not out of work because there's plenty of work that you need to do to keep your family together, to keep your family intact if you're not going out to somebody else's job. That right there um, is now, especially what we're dealing with right now, millions are out of work. And I could just imagine because I've been there and it's not a good feeling, but I can imagine what it feels like to be a man because a man is the one that is the leader in the household. The, he sets the tone, all types of things. And so when you can't provide like the way you want to provide financially, 
it, it hurts. It's a, it's, it's, it's a mental thing that really messes with your psyche. How, how did you find yourself coming out of that place um, of just dealing with the fact that I, I'm no longer working right now, um, but I got to find a way? Because sometimes, truth be told, a lot of us, we just stuck. Mm-hmm. We get real stuck because we so used to working for a job and we, we know we're going to get that um, income in every two weeks. And then when it automatically stops and then you turn around and you have unemployment, but unemployment is not the same amount of money that you was bringing in, that will mess with your psyche. Definitely. How, how were you able to move and, and to be able to make the necessary adjustments so you don't stay in a or, or go into a depressed state. Um, um, it's it's funny you said depressed state because that was the next avenue. Um, but real quick, my background is I have a master's degree in global management with um, a concentration in cultural diversity in business, and I'm also an ordained minister, Baptist minister as well as a non-denominational minister. So. The combination of ministry and understanding business gave me what I thought was a little hope when I lost my job. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter what kind of degree you have. It also has an effect when you have a relationship with God that you think you have when everything is good. So for me, when I was unemployed, you know, I figured, oh, this will be, you know, quick. I'll be back to work in a week. I'll be back to work in two weeks. I'll be back to work next month. Okay, I'll be back to work in three months. Okay, I'm, I know I'm going back to work in six months. Okay, it, it's been about nine months. Somebody's going to be calling me soon. When I hit a year, you talk about a depressed state. I didn't even know I was depressed. I didn't even want to get off the couch. Because you have certain expectations of yourself, especially men. We know that when we're either in a relationship or in a marriage, we have to perform. Regardless of whatever the situation is, there's an expectation of protection and provision from the people that are in your household. And when you can't do that, it, it, it's devastating. And so I had to re assess my relationship with God. And boy, when I tell you I prayed like nobody's business during that period, I prayed. And were it not for those prayers and and, and the support of people around me, there's no telling what would have happened. And so mentally, um, you, you go into a state of, of numbness because you, you, you're used to a routine that is no longer there. And so you try to develop a new routine to compensate for the one that you lost when you had a job. But that new routine doesn't provide income, so you're concerned about bills and you're concerned about your family eating, you're concerned about gas in the vehicle, all of these other things that, well, I know I'll get a check next week and then we'll, we'll take care of that. Well, when there's no check next week, what do you do? Where do you turn? You can't go to your family and friends because now they're looking at you like, well, you're a grown man. Well, what, 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 what you, you know, why can't you keep a job? What's wrong? What's the problem? You know, regardless of whether or not there's a 10% unemployment rate in the black community, regardless of whether or not there's a, a COVID-19 um, putting everybody on, on the back burner, making you stay at home because of safety reasons, doesn't matter. You still have to provide. You still have to be a leader in your house. So if you're a true man, what do you do? How do you get over that hump? You got to turn to a source that's higher than yourself. That is the only way that you can get through this. I don't care if you're atheist, agnostic, whatever. You better believe in something higher than yourself to get through that kind of a state of mind. And that's what helped me. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I know that you you put you have all these credentials and you said, you know, it still kind of shocks your system. You know, how do you speak to men 
who are going through this situation it's like oh man you don't know what I'm, what you talking about oh you <laughs> you know all of this and i'm sure you get it come on so mm. uh you know give us a a taste of what a session would be like i would say you know i feel you i hear you but for me it's about being humble you can get all of these letters and dashes and names and whatever behind your name that says you've accomplished something. But we live in a world of what have you done for me lately? <laughs> Not what did you do for me in the past? What have you done for me lately? And if you're not humble to recognize that, hey, I can't accomplish what I accomplished last year, this year, because of whatever's going on, so I need to refocus, revamp, and find an avenue so that I'm not sitting still. The worst possible thing a person can do when they're out of work is to sit at home. And I say that because if you do, that state of depression jumps on you and you don't even know it's there. And it hits you so hard you can't even get out of bed, let alone sit on the sofa and watch television. You have to move, even if it's volunteer work, even if it's just, you know, going to your kid's school, what have you, you have to keep busy because what happens is when you get into that funk, you don't want to be around people. But if you're not working, you got to be around someone who is because you never know where the next opportunity is going to come from, whether it be something where you can work for yourself at home or whether it be that you find another position that complements what your background is. But if you're sitting at home, it's difficult to do that, even if you're looking online. Because when you find a job online, you fill out the application, well, they don't know what you look like. They don't know who you are as a person, where they can evaluate you if you sit in front of them for an interview. So your resume's got to be on point. Most of us don't really know how to make that resume that way. So the best thing to do is to be around people because they will, some will encourage you, some may challenge you. The best people are going to challenge you because the more challenge that you have, the more you tend to focus on things. And then you don't have time to fall into a funk of depression. You, you really hit so many points where a lot of people don't talk about this stuff <laughs> especially men especially men and this is why i stress so much i will always have this conversation with dr finch that we need to hear from our men we don't hear from them often and when i shared with her about we need men she was all on it and she understands because we have this dialogue because we can relate in so many ways we need to hear the other side of, because yes, we could talk woman to woman all day long, but we need to hear from our men in a way where the language is foreign to us because they don't, don't hear from them enough. And so when we hear from them, it's like, wait a minute, what? You go through something too? But majority are men, what they are taught to do is to be quiet, to be silent, not to show your weak side. And, and so then now you are just, you go along with life, just dealing with it. But if you keep on going on with life, dealing with it in that silent type of way, then, you know, you get into that depressed state of mind. You get into a way where you don't even know how to express yourself. You get into a way where now you're bringing this up into your relationship, into your marriage or whatever that you're doing. You bring in those things up of those baggage of not being able to express yourself. So I, I'm just, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm loving this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I need, so, I need to hit you with something real quick too. Yes. Because you, there's a term that's typically used for women. It's called suffering in silence. Have you heard that before? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, as a black man, because I was talking more in a broad spectrum across color lines, but let's narrow it down to, to the brothers. When we go to elementary school, 
if we talk too much, we get put in our place, chastised. If you go home and you're a little rambunctious, you get put in your place, you get chastised. So as you get older, regardless of your dad or whatever male figure telling you, look, man, you don't tell nobody your business. You don't let nobody know what's going on with you. You just got to man up and handle it. Well, that's being addressed by everybody in your life. So as you get older, the conditioning is, I am not supposed to say anything. I'm supposed to just put my head down and keep moving forward. And then when you come home, if you're in a relationship, at some point, <laughs> you're going to explode. And who do you typically expo explode on? Your significant other or whoever's closest to you. Why? Because you can't do it anywhere else. And so that, that mentality of holding it in, holding it in, holding it in, pushing it down, pushing it down. It's creating a volcano ready to erupt. You know, I haven't looked at the specifics on what the um, abuse rate is in, in our community, but I know it's relatively high, you know, because we don't have any anywhere else to go. We can't go out in the street and voice our opinion. We can't voice our opinion on a job because the minute a black man gets loud in any kind of way, you're a threat. Well, hey, we're a threat when we don't even say anything. So. We have to curtail everything that we do everywhere we go. It, <laughs> that is the definition of, of mental disruption <laughs> because you can't let anything out and it's taught and then reinforced. That's a very good point. So now that you have so many different things going on that could affect this mental state of mind, you know, especially now with the pandemic and now Black Lives Matter and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, have you decided to change your approach or you're still going to go in the same way, just beef it up a little bit? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the pandemic has kind of put a different twist on things. The death of um, George Floyd, and the explosion of, of people recognizing and acknowledging, you know, their wrongdoing by being silent kind of puts a different spin on things also. Um, and I say that because, like I said previously, we can't go anywhere and say a word without somebody saying, oh, my God, he's, he call the police because this, this black guy is going crazy. And all we're doing is expressing ourselves. Um, and it doesn't matter how you express. I, I'm what you would consider eloquent in my speech, but even I have been, you know, placed in a situation where I have to talk down someone from calling the police on me because I didn't agree with them. So the, the, the atmosphere is changing, but regardless of how the atmosphere changes, I think as black men, we're still going to have to be cognizant of who we're speaking with and how we speak to them. Because again, throughout history, we've been considered the enemy for whatever reason. We, we've been labeled as dangerous, you know, regardless of how mild mannered we are. So the, the, the twist is we have to, as men, find a way and, and, and also a safe place to express what we're feeling. Um, for me, a safe place is I had a church men's group. And I also write. So writing is very therapeutic, but a lot of us don't like to read. So conversely, we don't like to write either. However, it, it, to get things out of you where you can go back and look at it, wow, I really felt like that. Man, what did I do? And you can keep reading and see what you did and say, oh, man, I messed that up. If that situation comes up again, I'm not going to go that route. You know, but you, you can't revisit things if you don't have a log of what happened in the past or how you got out of this situation or how you worked your way out of that situation. So, yeah, uh, the interjection of, of, of self-awareness 
um, through some venue of either speaking to other brothers who understand you or writing it down so that you can go back and read it for yourself. That has to be brought forward. So linking arms with our men. I'm so <laughs> I'm just like, you know, um, because I know and I've seen the devastation that can happen when there is no men that look like they've been through things they, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and what can happen um, when you don't have an outlet? We as women, oh yeah, we can have an outlet real quick. Um, but men just really don't have like that outlet of other men they could be able to have these conversations with um, on how they could be able to prove things, whatever the case may be. And I also noticed that a lot of conferences, they don't have conferences with men um, on a panel. It's usually women. Um, mm -hmm. But we 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 gonna change that with breaking barriers unapologetically because it's not about just women. It's about changing the lives um, in in individuals in regardless of it's life or business, one household at a time. And the household, there's men in the households too. So we need to be able to um, provide whatever that is so they can be able to have that outlet. So I am very thankful that you say yes to um, being a speaker and sharing your message. Um, and I know there's going to be so much way deeper that you're going to go on um, at the conference. So what's the, what would you give three things as to why people need to attend the Breaking Berries on Apologetic Conference that's going to take place on July 24th and 25th, 2020, virtually this year? Well, um, number one, they need to attend so they can learn how to understand not just themselves, but people around them. Even those that aren't saying anything, they have a story. And a lot of times you can see it in their face or in their eyes without them saying a word. But most of us just say, oh, well, that's just who they are. And then we move on about our business. But if you understand who you are and what's going on with you, you can see something in someone else and maybe say that word. And that'll bring them out of whatever funk or whatever issue that they're dealing with. Um, number two, like you said, um, most panels are filled with women. And I have no issue with strong women. My wife is a very strong woman. My mother is extremely powerful. But a lot of women have raised what they thought were strong men. But in actuality, they've actually handcuffed their sons in some cases, not all but in some cases. So there needs to be a level of deliverance from that as well. And I think this is an opportunity for that too. And then lastly, um, just some enjoyment. Just, just, you know, there's nothing better than fellowshipping with people who are like-minded and, and who want to learn more about not just themselves, but, you know, what's going on in the world around them. Wonderful, wonderful examples. So I would like to go a little deeper on that. So tell us why you decided to be a part of the Breaking Barriers Unapologetically Conference. Well, interestingly enough, my wife attended the conference, was it last year, I think? Um, and she was invited by a friend. Wasn't really sure what she was getting herself into, but, uh, you know, her friend and her, you know, work together and they have begun doing a lot of things together. And when she came home, from that conference, I had a pretty much a new wife. Um, her mindset was like so forward thinking. And this was something that I hadn't seen from her before. And it was impressive. And I said, you got all of this change from a conference. And she said, you would not believe it. And she spoke so highly of Vanessa. I was like, okay, so you got your girl crush then, <laughs> you know. And um, when, I guess Vanessa found out about the book that I had written um, some years back called Man Down But Not Out, um, you know, we, got, we talked a little bit. And I actually have that book coming back out again. It's going to be revised. Um, 
I spoke in speaking with Vanessa, I was like, man, this is something that needs to be talked about. It, it just has to be talked about. Everybody that I see in the media and the different conferences that I've attended, they, they skirt around the real issues. They don't really want to tackle the subject matter head on because you scare people. They won't, unfortunately, buy your products. They just walk away because nobody wants to be put in their place or challenge themselves. But from what I understand at the conferences that Vanessa do, does, you, <laughs> you're going to be challenged. And that's the only way we can get better. We had a really amazing conversation, and then we had a private conversation. It was like we'd known each other forever. And um, one thing that I had prayed for before this conference, I said I was looking for my village because I'm a believer that um, there's there's power in unity um, because there's no way I could do this by myself. There's no way. And I know me, um, I, I love pushing the envelope. I know the things that I have worked so hard to be able to accomplish. Um, I, I don't do things what people want me to do. I do what's needed. And um, I'm not the person to um, just, you know, just overlook it when we could be able to address it so we could be able to um, handle it head on. And sometimes people um, degrade people. That and that's not what I do. I, I want us to be able to understand I'm with you. And so with meeting your wife, and when she got back home, she said to me, she said, I'm my husband, I'll talk to you. And I said, Oh, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. And so that's when the first time we had got on the phone, she said, He said, I don't know what you did to my wife. Um, but when you have that next conference, just let I'm letting you know I'm gonna be there. And I was like, Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so just to hear that, um, Thank you. Um, I, I'm just doing what I am called to do and to be able to um, open up the floor for all of us to have a seat at the table. So thank you so much. Um, well, I have to thank you because so many people have gifts, talents, and abilities that they don't walk into their calling. I mean, even I can be um, a person that falls in that category but you have and the effect that you have when you do talk to people is evident you, you you're following your calling look i'm gonna be strong on this side okay <laughs> okay leave the audience with a message what message would you give them um to be able to protect their mental state of mind the message I'll leave with everyone is this. And, and it's, it may sound kind of biblical, but, you know, that's where I get my, my strength from. No matter what happens today, God willing, there will be tomorrow. And if there is a tomorrow, you can forget the ills and woes of yesterday because you have a new day to start fresh, to start anew, and to move forward. You can lay down whatever burdens that you have and leave them in yesterday. Just move forward. Keep positive. Surround yourself with positive people. And everything will be all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Smith, because you know I can't get that first name. <laughs> you can't get it. You're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Um, I know that your message is really going to open up so many conversations that are so overdue. And I thank you for saying yes to being a speaker. And I'm looking forward to your message um, at the conference as we go deep diving. And then also the message that you're going to be on the the men's panel. Yes, we are really pushing for our men. Um, so uh, I'm excited. So anybody who um, would love to be able to attend the Breaking Barriers Unapologetically Conference, 
please make sure that you go to www.bbuconference.com to secure your seat at the table. Um, you do not want to miss this conference. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be a two-day virtual event. Um, so make sure you get your tickets. And also, make sure that you are following us all over social media, Motivate Social Podcast, where we are changing the world um, via social media. Dr. Finch and I love what we do. And to be able to bring people to share their message on the podcast is is absolutely an honor and we don't take any of it for granted so we want to be able to hear from you we want you to make sure that you follow us all over social media so you can stay updated to all the things that we have coming up that's going to be able to help you in your life and or your business so dr finch is there anything that i missed because i probably missed something <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you so much, Javernia, for being here today. I was truly, truly impressed by everything you said today, and I definitely learned something. Um, I know the man, men panel is going to be fabulous, and I just can't wait for uh, all that y'all bring. And so if you are listening today to this wonderful presentation. Oh, I know you will touch. So definitely reach out, uh, find out more about his book, find out more about the panel, and of course, find out more about the Breaking Barriers Unapologetically Conference. And you can get this interview and other interviews on Changing Minds Online, on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, Instagram, and of course, on Twitter at Change Mind Online without the E. So until next time, everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.